So, yesterday's episode was a little interesting. <laughs> but now, once again, let's change gears. Now, we've got the Squadron 42 roadmap. And that's going to be an interesting piece of information to digest, you know, over over the coming uh, over the coming weeks. Certainly, watching that evolve, something that we've asked for for a long time. But I thought I would go a different direction with what will be the final ship updates of 2018, and I would look back at just what a great year 2018 has been. Seriously. One of the things that you always, uh, you guys always get to see is uh, the footage that I record in the game, which I then use to uh, narrate over while I'm talking about the game. This is something that you see all the time. What you don't see, for the most part, is all the screenshots that I take. And while I do recycle through footage and then erase it and then use up new footage and then erase it and get new footage, I never erase the screenshots. The screenshot that you're looking for at right now is from the 3.0 PTU. This is December the 18th, 2017. This screenshot is over a year old. And this was the very first chance that I got to step into the persisting universe in 3.0. Remember, this is the shift from 2.0 to 3.0. And if you remember what 2.0 and 2.2 and 2.63, all, you know, all the way through, what that patch was like compared to what we have now. This is an Im immense and enormous leap in terms of the game. Also, there were some immense and enormous bugs in the very beginning. The early PU in 3.0 was marked by two things at this point. How beautiful it was and how broken it was. <laughs> It was generally thought to be a record at the beginning of 3.0, and many of you will probably remember this. It was like almost record-breaking to get a gameplay session that lasted over 15 minutes before it crashed. That was amazing. If you could get 20 minutes or 30 minutes, by the time we got 3.0, we were actually at a point, or 3.1 rather, we are actually at a point where we could play for up to an hour before it would crash on us. But in the very beginning, <laughs> 3.0 would fall apart like crazy. And, you know, one of the funniest things was we were always getting the mission to go out to the Star Fair to retrieve a piece of cargo off the wreck and generally the game would be stable enough to give you just about enough time to go pick up that piece of cargo before the game would just crash out and implode on you. Now, in the early days of 3.0, if you were playing, you may remember these markers. And then again, maybe you don't because missions in the very beginning were completely worthless. <laughs> Whenever you get on Spectrum and someone starts arguing with you and trying to shut you down, it's like, oh my god, what are you doing? Stop making suggestions to CIG. The devs know what they're doing. Stop talking, please. Just let them make the game. You just need to shut up. Remember that between 3.0 and 3.1, the rewards for the in-game missions, the same missions that people are doing today, had to be multiplied by a factor of 10. <laughs> that's right you know the 980 credit mission that you got that that was 98 credits back then look at the price of a hammerhead now you know when people are complaining about how am i supposed to earn all this money to buy these ships now with these missions imagine what it would have been like if no one had complained about the original mission system that been like are these rewards a joke i mean i have to do one mission to maybe get enough money to buy a medipen or a grenade <laughs> that's the way it was back then and that's 
one of the things that you may or may not remember is when we used to do these missions, we would scavenge these sites like crazy. This kind of marks the point in Star Citizen where ships like the Avenger and the Cutlass and the Freelancer really came to the forefront. There was a lot of people who kind of looked at it and said, oh, I don't know about that. I kind of like my fighter. I kind of like this. I kind of like that. But in these days, when you were trying to make money in the PU, the only way to really do it was to get a mission where it was go retrieve the package from the crash Starfarer, the crash Freelancer, the crashed Caterpillar, and then run around scavenging all the crates off the ground to bring them back to Olisar or Grim Hex to sell them so you could at least walk away with almost a decent amount of earnings. We used to try and concoct ways to like bring our ship like with all the stored cargo into the hangar module and then see if we could store all of you know the cargo that we were picking up in the hangar module and see if it wouldn't be permanent. And we would test this over and over again to see if there wasn't some kind of way that we could kind of go out and just keep snagging crates and snagging crates and hiding them in the hangar module because we they would still show up in our ships in the hangar module see if we couldn't store them there and then come back and retrieve them later put them all back onto our ship after we would built up a huge stash of them then bring up our ship in the pu and then sell it all at once at all of and make a lot of money because the game was so unstable this was the only way that we could think of to really make any decent money because the mission payouts were an absolute joke. Now, you might be thinking that this was a particularly rough time. Not really. I mean, getting into 3.0 in the first few patches into 3.0, things were pretty unstable, but it started to even it. And it started to become a little bit more playable you know we didn't have a group system yet that wasn't a thing um trade goods were kind of wishy-washy in the initial version though they did update the trade good prices and eventually trading actually became something worthwhile now you may remember that about 11 months ago we're on the topic of trade goods. We ended up in a weird position where my caterpillar earned the, you know, its name, the gambler. And that was based on the fact that the game was so crashy, but the trade system was actually in a, in a fairly decent place. And so with a little bit of repetition and a little bit of luck, once the game got a little bit more stable around 3.01 and beyond, we actually kind of got to a place where we could start to really see what the potential of the universe was. And so I started bringing out the Caterpillar and using it, doing trade runs here, there, and everywhere, and building up money. And even though we only started with the initial 5,000 credits, we had a trade system back then which, you know, with a reasonable amount of play and a reasonable amount of repetition and knowing what you, where you were going and knowing how to go about things, you could very quickly turn that into a million credits, especially on a big cargo ship like this. And I mean, right now, even to this day, the Caterpillar still is kind of the big daddy of the cargo ships that we get in the PU. It was fairly easy to make that money, but it was also fairly easy to lose it. Hence the name, The Gambler. Now, some of you may remember this uh, picture here some of you may not remember it this is from one of the very early days with the caterpillar you know when trading was that good it was very quick and very easy obviously to make enough money to fully outfit your character buy everything in the store you had every gun every set of armor you were kitted out and you were actually at a point now where you were just kind of exploring the game and i had started going and finding the shipwrecks and this was one of the shipwrecks this is old yellow not the yellow that you guys are playing on now. This is 1.0 yellow, which looked a lot different back in those days. And I used to go and I used to just retrieve goods off of the wrecks of ships and just use them 
you know, to place them around the interior of my ship to make the ship look more lived in, look, make it look like something that I was using on a daily basis instead of, you know, you call up your ship and, oh my God, it's a factory pristine caterpillar. No, now there were crates stored throughout the ship that made it look like at least someone was living there doing something with the ship. This is what we used to do to amuse ourselves because we were so quickly able to make millions of credits within a couple of days of reasonable gameplay that it, we just had nothing else to do with our time and this is what we did to amuse ourselves. And a lot of people kind of argued that, well, we're making too many credits too easy. You know, people are becoming a millionaire in less than a day of you know, really trying. What are people going to need all these credits for? Yeah, little did we know back then. Now, a lot of these things that we did to amuse ourselves, were, you know, we were waiting for 3.1, not realizing that 3.1 was going to introduce the single greatest one-man battle wagon the game has ever and probably will ever see. I'm speaking, of course, about the Battle Reclaimer. This monster, when it first arrived in the PU on March 31st, 2018, every single gun with the exception of the top turret on this ship was controlled by the pilot and they were all gimbaled. <laughs> you could... This is also when we started getting the pirate interdictions. Do you remember this? And all of a sudden we were getting interdicted like crazy. You could take the reclaimer out and just fly it around and get interdicted. And you could evaporate NPCs with this shit. It, it just destroyed them. Fighters, Connies. Remember back when we used to see the pirate caterpillar before someone figured out that the pirate caterpillar, you know exploding and spawning hundreds of crates into space was killing the servers. Remember that? This thing destroyed them all. You could go out and do pirate friggin' mercenary missions. Whether I'm trying to think of it right now. The pirate bounty missions. You used to be able to do those missions in the Reclaimer. And it was profitable and it was crazy fun because all the guns, with the exception of the top turret, were under your control. Even the guns on the back of the ship, and somehow they just fired through the ship, didn't hit your ship, but hit the enemy. And you melted things. Nowadays, sadly, that's not the case. You get in the reclaimer, you fire the guns, and all the guns are facing in different directions, and all your shots are going off in the distance. And nothing is hitting anything of any particular use. So, sadly, it was a very short-lived, but very fun time. Now, the Reclaimer, apart from, you know, its awesome battle playability in the beginning, was... A pretty amazing ship. It was the biggest ship in Star Citizen up until that point. I think technically it still is the biggest ship in Star Citizen at this point. It's still the beast on the block. And this ship had a whole host of problems when it came out. Between you know, the doors and seats not appearing glitched to the fact that it handled pretty brutally. And I even made a video where I showed it ping-ponging off the surface of a moon. And it was just... There were a number of problems with this ship, but remember, this was the first big ship that CIG brought out. And so there were going to be those problems. Those were things that we had to expect. And, you know, we had fun with them. We made fun of them. There were issues with the elevators, which, you know, can't, can't quite reach the ground <clears throat> still. Um, but these, you know, these are issues that are going to get resolved over time. And I think that, you know, when you look at the problems that CIG is facing with a lot of these ships and they come out and all of a sudden, you know, people come up and they say, hey, I got a laundry list of problems with this ship. And there's always that immediate, you know, there's that reflex group in the Star Citizen community who automatically go, no, no, it's pristine, it's perfect. Stop complaining. Stop it. 
you're hurting their feelings. And then, you know, the other people realize, oh yeah, this is a game in early access, so I should probably give them feedback on, you know, some of the problems that I'm encountering with the ship. That's probably what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not supposed to actually be playing Star Citizen. I'm playtesting right now because this is, you know, early access in the live game. But I digress. You know, the Reclaimer has a lot of problems, sure, but these are problems that are going to get solved over time. And when the next big ship comes out and the ship after that, the things that they learn with the Reclaimer are going to go into these next ships that are built. Now, if they're following a little too closely, they may have to wait a while to get these fixes, but ships further down the line are certainly going to receive those benefits. Now, of course, you remember this ship here. Been on the channel once or twice. And we've had certain discussions around the cockpit of the ship. And eventually, yes, it was fixed. Despite a myriad of individuals who felt that, oh, no, there's nothing wrong. And then all of a sudden, you know, CIG said, yeah, you know what? If the dashboard comes up almost to the middle of the screen, that's probably a bad idea. They fixed it. And guess what? It was improved. Well, but there were other ships further down the line, like the Lightning, like the Hurricane, that preemptively got fixes for the same issue. CIG even featured this in episodes of ATB. We saw them fixing the ships. And that's the important part that you have to remember. I mean, certainly, you know, Disco Lando will remind you of this almost every time he appears on RTV or on Calling All Devs and say, you know, this isn't game construction, it's game development. It's a learning process and certainly we are seeing that live. And as things move along, certain things do accelerate. It's important to kind of look back at these things like this every once in a while and think back to what we had in 2.0 and that series of patches and how limited that was and how basic that was and compared to what we have now and I mean certainly you know landing on a moon two years ago was utterly impossible now our bigger concerns are you know landing systems things to assist us in landing especially in the dark those are the big concerns whereas you know just over a year ago this didn't even exist you know, this wasn't even here this was just a dream, an idea. This was something that we saw in trailers, but we never got to do. Now we're doing it. The truth is, you know, 3.0 did start rough. It did. I mean, this right here, getting this to work on a consistent basis was really tough in the beginning. It really was. And not just for, you know, CIG in-house but for all of us on our PCs you know with the myriad of possibilities and permutations of systems and setups getting this to work for so many people was no small task even this little bit right here just landing a ship on a moon you know this was almost unthinkable you know and now where are we yeah here we are. I'd say we've come a long way in a year. And I'm pretty excited to see what to, you know, 2019 is going to hold for us. The beginning of the year looks a little rough, you know. I misread the schedule. Actually, salvage is coming in 3.5. I thought it was 3.6. But I'm hoping that we're going to see some important leaps forward, especially for the Reclaimer uh, at the beginning of the year. Something to be excited about. But, I mean, when you really think about it, you know, day, if you're playing Star Citizen, you're only thinking back to the last week, the last two weeks, the last few months. Yeah, it does feel like, oh my God, this thing is taking forever. But when you think back across the scope of the year, then you include what we were doing the year before that. And then, I mean, the year even before that, we had next to nothing. And, you know, now here we are. Yeah, the first few years of Star Citizen, you know, as a backer, we're kind of rocky. Pretty much all we had were trailers and JPEGs and Arena Commander. But here we are. And it's, you know, more and more systems coming online. There are going to be more and more, you know, bumps in the road. 
but I'd say we're definitely heading in a strong direction. I can't wait to see what the future holds for this game. Thank you for watching. So, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen Squadron 42 development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.